Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're discussing devs. This has been on my mind for the last couple of months, and I haven't really been able to give it the attention it deserves. If you've watched the show, then you'll know that this is the universe and exact time that I was always meant to make this video. After all, this is the exact time driven by a matrix of variables that you actually watch the video. Perhaps this is the version of me that writes such an amazing script that the video trends on Reddit, and my mom will finally tell me that she loves me. Or maybe not. <laughs> Who knows? I'm absolved of everything. The universe is my puppet master, and I but a simple speck of dust on the ass of planet Earth. I'm, of course, talking about the overarching philosophical and scientific theories that the show devs were built upon and how they quantum entangle their way to telling us an honestly incredible story. If you haven't watched it yet, the first part of this video will be for you. A spoiler-free-ish synopsis giving exactly why I think the show is art modern art. Oh, devs, how can I explain something like devs? Well, I guess exactly as the show would. The main theory of devs is something called hard determinism. There is a difference, a loose scale between hard and soft determinism, depending on philosophers that you listen to, and it's technically hard determinism that's being discussed in the show. But the scope of all of that is outside of this video, so I'll just be saying determinism. It's the theory that challenges us probably most as humans because it suggests that we, acting as we do, watching this video, falling in love, don't actually have free will to make those choices. It's merely the facade of choice, when in reality, due to a currently incalculable amount of variables, we are acting as we would have always acted if you looked at our story from birth. I ate cereal today because I was hungry. I was hungry because I didn't eat dinner. I didn't eat dinner because of anxiety about making this video. I did that because of an overarching fear of failure that exists because I was bullied as a child and that happened because, well... Look at me, I'm grotesque, but the point is that the theory of determinism is that nothing is random, no choice has ever been our own, and we are fated to live as we currently do. It is one of the most fascinating debates that I think that we can have as humans with genuine human experiences and emotions, and the universal truth for those that subscribe to determinism is that free will does not exist. We don't have agency in anything, merely the appearance of agency and the appearance of choice. Now, where it gets really interesting and how it relates to devs is that because we are deterministic, because the universe is deterministic, if you could possibly observe and plot and calculate all of the variables of the environment and ourselves down to a true exactness, we could predict the future. That is what devs has done. They created a machine that can observe and understand so much of the world that it can see into the future. But the other side of determinism and knowing exactly what we are to a true fidelity is that you can also look backward, see exactly where those tram lines all started, just as we can figure out where they're going. We are beings stuck on tram lines that have been in place for millennia. And because of computing, big data, and analytics, we could one day see where those tram lines are taking us. This concept is called algorithmic determinism. And if you need proof of this existing, even on a small scale, it currently exists in our own world. Due to a matrix of variables that the system believes you to be, it has shown you this exact video. Or it now presents you a recommended video on the right of your screen that it thinks that you would like. A machine doing this, an understanding this, programmed by humans, sure. But the point is, on a small scale, algorithmic determinism exists. Now, imagine that applied to every aspect of your life. If you are a subscriber of this channel, you'll know that we talked about this with Westworld a little bit, but I would argue that devs tackles a much wider net of the philosophical implications. And I love it. I love it so very much because of that. The show also deals with simulation omniscience, mapping the human mind to a virtual media, and of course, the multiverse. I will say, Outside of these high philosophical concepts and, you know, really fun debates that you can have, simply the writing and cinematography worked so well together. The first episode and the music score, I've heard a lot of people maybe complain about that is a little jarring to people, but it all adds to the majestic art that is this show. I've also seen complaints that this wasn't the strongest female lead. And I don't really know how. I mean, I've heard this from multiple sources, so maybe I'm missing something but I don't fault the show at all for any of their casting. I will flat out say that I don't think anyone in the show was being carried. Everyone did great. Every single character felt like a genuine, real, existing person that is a part of the IT world they display. I've worked in Knox, development, customer facing, dealt with hundreds of vendors in my IT career. Literally, every single person that they show 
is someone in my life. And I don't think that that's ever happened before. Maybe Silicon Valley, but again, the point is that everyone acted their hearts out. It was cast well. And again, it was written perfectly. The plot, loosely defined, so I don't give anything away, is dealing with a future-telling machine, a benchmark in which the machine sees that nothing happens in the future, and the moments leading to that fuzzy spot of no return. But now, let's get into the spoiler talk and my thoughts on the ending, which I've seen a decent few not like for reasons I think I can empathize with. One of the key parts of determinism versus free will is that if we subscribe to the idea of us never making a choice, it means that we are accountable for nothing. In this story, Forrest feels such guilt about being on the phone with his wife, in his mind causing the death of her and his daughter, that he absolutely needs determinism to exist, even firing the person that figured out the algorithm who suggested a multiverse theory, because it means that in some universes they live, while in this one they die, and it was his choice that caused their death. He would be responsible. It's not inherently deterministic because it means we do have choice, but every choice branches off to create a matrix of other universes where the opposing has happened. With determinism and us only having one universe, it means that he isn't at fault. What was happening was always going to happen, and he but a simple cog in the machine, having no responsibility for his daughter currently being dead. It's the same logic that makes arguing for determinism very hard in the real world because all you need to do is mention crime. I've seen this argument on dozens of forums that all end here because if you believe that Forrest wasn't guilty because it was always meant to happen this way, you carelessly make no one responsible for even the most heinous of crimes because they could be chalked up to well, it was always meant to happen. My upbringing, genetic makeup, the current environment made me do it. Anyone that was born in this position and wore my shoes could have done the same, etc., etc. How could you convict someone knowing that they weren't able to actually do anything but commit that crime? So this is why determinism is problematic, and it's also why Lily throws the gun away, and the simulation only works when the multiverse theory is applied. Determinism? doesn't exist. And I don't think Alex Garland, the creator of the show, wanted to tell that story. Quick side note, I do think he may have shot himself in the foot a little bit here, but let me get to that later. Lily throwing the gun out showed one of two things. Determinism isn't real, or they didn't collect enough information to create an accurate representation of the world that is deterministic. Since the machine in the end is still revered as God, and it's never shown as wrong after Stuart has made the final changes, I think Alex Garland wanted us to take away that the multiverse theory exists in this universe, and that people are capable, even if it was just her, of making free will choices. I loved the ending. After this event, they still both die because Stuart disables the machine, and a case can be made that in both instances, this is ultimately what killed them. But the damage is done. A choice was made, and Stuart wanted to stop the machine that he built because the person at the helm was too powerful and not wise enough to not abuse this power eventually. Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Him not guessing with Stuart showed a lack of even wanting to learn at this point in his life, let alone understand the warning that he was providing. It's fucking brilliant. Honestly, Stuart in my opinion, did the right thing. It ultimately meant nothing, but I fully believe that he looked into the future and saw what he needed to see. Just as he told Lily to go on through, he played his role as the machine wanted. Now, here's where I have an issue with maybe the fundamental high-level conceptual stuff when it comes to simulation theory. They make the claim that when you watch the future, it doesn't change how you act. They continue their actions, saying these words, feeling these feelings, but I don't think it would personally do that. I don't believe that you would behave that way. If you tell me my next word is going to be banana, out of sheer curiosity, I'm going to say orange. And an argument can be made that the simulation has already witnessed you making that change. So it would already have suggested orange, right? But orange was predicated on me knowing I was about to say banana. And the cycle continues. It's very paradoxical. It would go around in circles. And ultimately, I think the second you view this simulation, it changes what would happen in reality. Either that or the orange banana paradox would wrap itself into so many circles, it would break the simulation because it's unsolvable, which the person would say knowing the simulated outcome. So all of that to say, <laughs> I think once you view it, you can change from that. And only then, once you genuinely know exactly how you are expected to act and how you were say always meant to act, 
That is the point in which you can act outside of your standard, genuine actions and reactions, and decohere from the simulation. As such, when Lily viewed this version of her future, it was only then where she was able to choose to do something different. If she didn't know that part, she could have very well killed Forrest without knowing that she was always meant to kill him. But here's the thing. In the end, it doesn't matter. Determinism isn't real in this world, in this story that they're telling us, the multiverse is. And she was one of the only few, or maybe the only, able to divert from this projected course. The only reason I bring this up is because, well, I mean, it's fun to think about, right? And the show makes this case multiple times that people would behave as they normally would while viewing how they would behave in the simulated future of their life. And I don't know, I just think it may have been maybe more of an impactful part of the story. Now, this amazing story ends with them mapping the human mind and the current state of their consciousness before death and uploading them to a simulated world where they could live as gods in a different time with different people capable of understanding the strings that control the system. Uploading to this machine was hinted at with the rat being brought back to life, but again, this is just a really fun concept, and I think eventually we'll reach this point. I don't think any of us will be able to traverse to virtual Eden, but, you know, after decades of failed tests and, you know, certain degrees of fidelity with human consciousness and probably a lot of excruciating hell for, you know, the early people that sign up to have their minds mapped, I think a true fidelity will exist between the analog and digital versions of our mind. And yeah, I totally see virtual heaven as a, as a real thing one day. I felt like it was a great addition to the story, and in a sense, I'm glad that it was a happy ending for Forrest and Lily. I highly recommend this show. Trust me, you don't need to study this stuff to understand it. The show does a great job, and more than anything, it tells the story beautifully. This is art, and I can't recommend it enough. Devs, in the end, wasn't the standard development sector of his company, but Deus, the Latin for God. He was creating God. And the beautiful side is that you can view this as the machine, himself, or as Lily. And that is also something really special. But with that, we come to the end of the video. If you're interested in more videos about devs, Westworld, and many others, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. This channel is always supported by the wonderful people over on Patreon, including this month's Neos of the Matrix. Michael Link, Robert Holtz, Jeff Chun, Logan, Carly Ogeen, Melissa Facetta, and Luis Brooks. Much love, every single person watching this video, hearing my words. I appreciate you so much, and I cannot wait to talk to you all again very soon.